relevant data 437 m reels for motion v effects is now available onto the tutorial hello this is george edmondson with motionvfx.com today we are looking over m reels once you have installed m reels via m installer it can be located in your titles as well as your effects and your transitions. To get a real-time preview of any of these titles or transitions, simply take your cursor and scrub over and you will be able to see how those will affect your footage in your canvas there. You can do this with your titles as well. So here you see we have overlay effects and you see how it will adjust your footage. Then below we have different reels and these are going to be 10 presets using drop zones. So you have all of your animation and transitions, text, things like that already embedded in to make it really simple. Think of those like templates. And then we have some typography presets. So here in our timeline, we already have one of our reels and this is how we opened up our intro there. So you can see here reel number four and over in our inspector, we have a few different parameters. We have animations in and out. We have flash brightness, the directional blur amount, directional blur angle, prism amount and prison angle. And then we have our different drop zones that we need to fill for this template. Also notice we have a drop zone rotation and we will get to that in just a second. But let's go ahead and fill our drop zones. We are going to open up our library sidebar here. And with our reel selected, we will just simply click on the drop zone well. And then I'm going to kind of scrub through and find where I'm dancing like a silly, silly goose. So I want to have that as my endpoint there for drop zone one. And then I'm going to click on drop zone two and let's scrub a little bit more. There I am, some more dancing. So we will fill this. I'm going to click drop zone three well. Scrub a bit more. We will select drop zone four. And then drop zone five. And click apply clip. Now we do have a dedicated set of tutorials on how to use drop zones. I do encourage you to check those out. Some drop zones are going to host video just fine while others you may need to use a compound clip. This is a limitation within the Apple frameworks of how drop zones do work. So we definitely encourage you to check that out whenever you are using drop zone wells and you want video to play back. In this case, because my clip is so long and it is longer than my title here with my drop zones, the videos are gonna play just fine and I don't have to use compound clips. But again, you just need to be aware that there are some limitations. Go and check out those drop zone tutorials if you need to do so. All right, so let's just go ahead and scrub through and you can already see that this worked out great. We've got the different transitions, the different dancing, and then we go straight into our next clip. So really simple, really easy to use. Now, again, I just mentioned earlier, we have our different drop zone rotations. So I'm gonna go back to our first drop zone here and let's just change our drop zone orientation from zero and then we have 90, negative 90 and we have 180. So if you wanted that to be at a different orientation, you can do so here and then below you'll be able to 
adjust where that footage is happening within that drop zone. So if you did want to use M reels, but you wanted that to be at a horizontal uh, orientation, then that's how you do that. You just simply change the drop zone rotation. So I'm gonna change that back to zero. And then I do need to reset my parameters there and we're good to go. All right, for this next clip, why don't we use some of our overlay effects and our typography. So I would like to show our haze effect on this one, which is really cool. I'm just gonna kind of scrub over it so you can see what it's doing there. So I'm going to just click and drop this in. These are working as adjustment layers, so it works just like any other title. You just drop it in over top of your clip and you can already see there's that bit of haziness there so i'm going to disable and then re-enable so you can see what it's doing really cool look over in our inspector we have animation in and out i'm just going to turn those off because i just want that haze to be throughout this clip and then we have haze effect here at a 100 you can slide that to your liking and then we have haze boost so if you want even more haze you can simply boost here then we have footage saturation and footage brightness. So a really simple tool that is very powerful and works really quickly to enhance that hazy look over your footage if that's what you're going for. I also want to add some typography. So again, if you scrub over, you can see how that looks. I'm simply going to bring that typography in over top of my next clip. You can use the handles to adjust that. So there's a couple ways we can do this. We can have our typography on top of our haze and it's gonna give you this nice, sharp, clean text. Or you can bring that below your haze effect and now that haze is actually affecting the text as well and you can see there's a bit of that white sort of light bleed over onto my shirt. I think that looks really cool so I'm gonna keep it there. In our canvas, we have on-screen controls for position, scale, and rotation. Now, all of these M reels are going to already be set at a border safe. So just definitely make sure that you are aware that sometimes whenever you are creating a vertical video, if you were to put your text, let's say over here, that's gonna be outside of your border safe areas. So when you upload that to Instagram, TikTok, YouTube Shorts, something like that, that text will actually potentially get cut off if someone is viewing that on a mobile device. So just be sure that you're keeping that within that border safe. If you do wanna open up your view and just make sure that you check overlays, show title, action, safe zones, you can see that that's gonna be within that safe area. So just a quick tip there in regard to using text. Over in our inspector, we have animations in and out and all of your position, scale, opacity, and blend modes. You have your title where you can make changes to your text or you can toggle that on and off, as well as your fonts and different colors. And then we have our description that we can toggle on and off as well. And if we wanted to just add a drop shadow to any of those, we can do so here. Note these texts will also move independently from one another. So if you wanted to move any of your text independently, you will be able to do so. And then your on-screen control is still going to move that globally. All right, let's move down to our next clip here. So we have me again, just dancing like a complete idiot. I want to use my overlay effects again. So why don't we use the zoom effect, which is really cool. So I'm just going to drag that in on top. I'm going to bring this over and then you can see how this works. There's just a zoom and you can see we have drop zone. I'm going to go over into my inspector and you can notice we have footage type. You can have drop zone, so you can fill that drop zone how we did earlier, or you can just change that to title background, which is what I did in our intro. And now you can see that we just zoom in. There's a bit of a transition happening, and then boom, a little bit of a handheld shake, and then right back out. 
Now we do have this on-screen control here, which is going to show kind of where that zoom is going on. So if I wanted it to be more zooming in as if it's zooming, you know, to my face a little bit, there we go. Over in our inspector, we have a pan and inside scale if we are using the drop zone there. So that is not going to affect if you have the title background, just so you know, but you can use this footage group scale here to adjust where you want that title background to be. We also have the zoom amount as well as our zoom target, and that's going to affect your on-screen control as well. We have our flash animation, so if we want that flash or don't want that flash, we can simply toggle that on and off, or we can change the amount. We also have our earthquake, twist, and shake, so that's just going to affect how that last little bit of animation happens there in our clip. All right, moving on. Why don't we take a look at some transitions now? So over here again, if you scroll over, you can kind of see how that looks. In our intro, I did use transition number five. So I'm simply going to click and drag this in between our two clips. And you can see as I use my arrow tools to just kind of push forward. There we go. And we have transitioned into our next clip. With that transition selected over in our inspector, we have a hue and saturation toggle where we can change the hue of that sort of flare thing happening there along with saturation brightness and our mix we have a bump map that we can toggle on and off you can see how that's affecting our footage along with the direction and the amount and then we have echo and all of the adjustable parameters beneath our echo and our pinch effect that we can again toggle on and off along with our pinch center and amount. And then we have a bit of grain that just kind of blends everything together. All right, over in our next clip, we're gonna show you just a little bit more of the typography. So why don't we just grab typography number 10. We had this one in. I wanted to show you this one because it has a lot of on-screen controls and I really, really like the look that this gives. So you can see here we have a master on-screen control for position, scale, and rotation, and that is going to affect everything there. And then we have all of the additional on-screen controls for any of the text. So if you wanted to put those in different places, you would do so here. I'm going to toggle off animations in and out just so you can see how they all look once they do make it up on the screen. Over in our inspector, we have different titles. So there's our main title here, and then all of the rest are just indicated with text one, text two, text three, etc. All right, and for this last bit, we're going to show you our different effects. So you can see I've got some different video clips stacked on top of each other. We're gonna be using these split screen effects here. So all you have to do is just drag any of these split screens onto the clip and you'll see some on-screen controls here. So this on-screen control is going to adjust your offset. The scale does not do anything. So just notice that you can change the offset here and then you can change where that's happening. It is working very similarly to M grid. Over in our inspector, we have the position and the offset parameters that are adjustable as well as your rough frame. So if you wanted to add a bit of a frame and you have three of those along with the width of the frame. So you can fine tune that if you would like to do so. All right, so that was our split screen one. And then why don't I grab for our second clip, I can use split screen four here and you can see we have an on-screen control. We do have the animation going on. So there we go, there's the animation. And then here is our adjustable parameter that is going to snap that to the grid. So over in our inspector, we've got the split screen position and then the footage offset. So let's say we wanted to maybe offset like this. 
And then on the bottom here, why don't we do split screen at number three and we can use our on-screen control and bring that down a bit. And then we can do the vertical offset. So we've got me down here. And then again, this is all just kind of playing around and figuring it out. There we go. We can bring our split screen one there. And then now they all kind of animate together. And then here you go. We've got these different sort of weird split screen things happening. I'm going to toggle off the animation in and out on split screen four. And then there you go. We've just got those split screens happening. I'm losing a bit of my head down at the bottom. So I'm going to do a vertical offset a little bit better. And there we go. Now, Emreels will work in a vertical timeline. It will also work over in a horizontal timeline as well. So you are not stuck with using Emreels vertical. As you can see here, any of these different effects, I can just drag those on and there you go. They are gonna be working with our multiple clips. If you fill in drop zones, they are going to work horizontally as well as our split screens. And that is just going to adjust and it will automatically know that you're in a horizontal timeline there and your different transitions. So as you can see here, there's our transition and that is going to work in that horizontal timeline. All right, and that is it from me. Thank you so much for checking out this tutorial. Emreels is now available on motionvfx.com. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.